Hey everyone, my name is Trevor Daly with Magmod. Thank you so much for joining us for another How I Shot It. Today, I am joined by Neil Redfern. Neil, thanks for joining me. Absolute pleasure. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you very much for asking me. Yeah, absolutely. Neil, I am excited. I know we've done these shows before. I think we've done maybe two, maybe, is this a third episode? Or the second one? Uh, that we've done? I, I think it's the second one, but this is my first solo. Is it? Awesome. <laughs> I did one with, yeah, Helen and I did one for Flashmasters, but this is the first one I've done on my own, yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, Neil, I'm, I'm so glad you joined us today. Um, I want to, before we jump into these images, and I'm actually really excited because you brought some behind the scenes video uh, that pe some people haven't even seen before. Uh, it hasn't yes, been on correct. the YouTube channel or anything, but I'm really excited to share that. But before we do that, I just want to actually just show where people can find you. Um, so here is your Instagram page, guys. Go check him out. He's amazing. The other thing is there's uh, right up here at the top, there's a link tree. And if you click that, you can actually find all kinds of stuff that Neil does. He has a, a YouTube channel that's absolutely incredible. He's got a Patreon, Lightroom presets. In fact, Neil, I'm going to jump over to your YouTube channel really quickly here. Uh, your website. And then, Neil, I want you to tell everyone a little bit about Flashmasters real quick. Tell them what this is oh, all about. Oh, Flashmasters. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so Flashmasters is something that my partner Helen and I set up last September. And we basically set it up to try and give... We always felt like when it comes to wedding photography or, or wedding award, photography awards even, that it was always a little bit, Flash didn't seem to have a place. So mm -hmm. we wanted to to give Flash that place and celebrate off-camera Flash, off-camera lighting images. So we set up Flash Masters. And it, we try and do it in three ways through education, through a lot of like similar to how you do with, with how I shot it interviews helping our members understand how they can improve their off-camera flash photography through community. We're very, very big on trying to give people a safe place to ask questions. We can all help each other. The more people ask questions, the more we all benefit. We do that in the form of a Facebook group and obviously the awards themselves. So we have bi-monthly awards where we uh, we invite people to submit their images. People can submit up to 10 images. And we have, in our opinion, some of the best off-camera lighting photographers in the world judging those awards. And and yeah, it's, we're, we're both putting so much into it. And it's just now about to have its first birthday, Flashmasters. So oh, yeah, wow. it's been it's been great. And we're, we're very honored as well to have the support of Magmod with Flashmasters. So, so thank you. It's, you know, it's been amazing to see what you guys are doing. And I love the fact that it's literally you're giving awards to photographers that are using Flash in amazing ways. And so uh, all the MagMod users out there watching this, be sure to go check out Flash Masters. It's flashmasters.co. Oh, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Everyone gets confused. It's just .co, not yeah. .com, just yeah. .co. <laughs> but the easiest way is go check out Neil Redfern's uh, Instagram. You can see the LinkedIn tree right there that links to Flash, Flash Masters. Also their Instagram page. Go follow that. It's amazing. So um awesome with that neil do you care if we jump right into these images and let's and I, go for it yeah i'm looking forward to we, it i think we even have a behind the scenes here first to get this thing going so i'm going to go ahead and pull this up um and tell us about what this setup is and then we'll show everyone the image the, yeah the reason i wanted to include this one is because it's a setup that i use quite often and it's a really good one if you don't have much you know, if, if the natural light is poor, as you can see here, this was in Lancashire in the UK. That's typical for the weather in Lancashire, gray skies. We don't have very much to help us here in terms of natural light. So uh -huh. this setup is, is three speed lights. The light behind the couple here, this was on one of my workshops, the light behind the couple just has a full CTO gel on there. Uh, the, the couple are being lit, as you can see there, by a speed light, which has just a mag sphere on there. Uh -huh. And there's a third light, which is lighting up the, the foreground, which um, which has a red, seat, uh, red gel on there. So the three lights together, basically, if I didn't turn the speed lights on, it would be pitch black. So I'm underexposing the whole scene and then using Magmod and the speed lights to create like a really nice effect. So three speed lights. The, the, initially, this was like trying to play on the fake sun setup. Uh -huh. uh, and then I say I've, so lights like behind and then there's the, the end result. So you can see the top left there, that is the speed lights behind the couple. They're being lit with a mag sphere and all the foreground bokeh that you see is just us shooting through like a, 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 it doesn't even have any leaves on it. It's like a bush, with just like twigs and things, but it gives us something. And by putting the red gel on there, it just creates that bokeh. And I, when I'm doing shots like this, like the fake sun type images like this, I like to use a very long focal length. And this was taken on my uh, 135 mil wide open at f1.8. 
That is that is incredible, man. So the bulk on the front, the kind of the water and stuff, that's you just shooting through some some branches and trees, you said? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I, I always like to shoot through something. I love bokeh and I love to create it. And I find that if I can basically just light something up and then get the camera really close. So yeah. the camera will be within six, seven inches of what I'm shooting through. That's where the bokeh comes. And on this day, you can see actually behind the couple there, Demi and James, that there's bits of rain in the air. So what I'm shooting through has bit water droplets on it as well, which will also help to create that foreground bokeh. Absolutely. Such a beautiful image. So now that I have the image up here, because you were kind of explaining it as as we were showing the behind the scenes video, but as I have the the video or the the image up here, can you just give one more summary of you have it was it was four flashes. So so three. I've got I've actually got some notes here. So so yeah, there's one. If we start from behind, so the flash at the back that just has a CTO gel on there. Okay. Uh, to give that really warm light, and that's going to also hitting Demi and James. You can see as well. It gives them that yep. that four that like nice rim yep. light. That was on a sixteenth power. Although the video doesn't really represent it, it was actually quite dark at this point. So yeah. it, it's a, it's very easy to to overpower the ambient. So that was on a sixteenth power. The light that is hitting the couple that is that is on a one thirty two power. That just has a mag sphere just to take the the just to create a, a, a nicer light on the couple, take the, the uh, I always think it's quite harsh, a bare speed light, so the sphere just softens that light around the edges. And light in the foreground, we have a speed light on one, two, eight power, and that's, that got, has a red CT, uh, red gel on it. Again, yeah. just to give something in the foreground, because without that foreground, it would be, I, I think that image is made by the fact we, we've got that foreground bokeh. So yeah. I need to light it up in order to see it. Do you know, I'm going to go back real quick to this video. Do you know, whoops, I went one, one ahead here. You know, in this That's video, fun. does it show, does it show the foreground? I'm going to, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Yes, okay, you so will see it. Yeah. Oh, so it's those trees right there. Exactly. So even though there's no leaves on it, like it still gives something quite nice. They will have had, and I, you can see there, there's, there's my speed light setup yeah. with the various flash powers. I love it. I'm going to go back to these trees right here. So these trees are what that flash right there with the red gel is pointing at those trees. And that's what you're shooting. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Love this, that. See, this It's something I do fairly often to say, because this is what I love about Magmod and using off camera flash. You can literally create something from nothing. So if we only had natural light at that point, I'd be struggling. You know, we'd be up at like, I don't know, ISO 1600 with flat light. It wouldn't have looked great. Whereas we can create really dynamic impactful yeah. shots with with the speed lights you know that's what i that's what i absolutely love about using flash is literally yeah. even in the situation that you're in right here typically you know if you're shooting just natural light and you don't have flash typically you're starting to run out of light um mm -hmm. I, in, in the uk i imagine you guys have lots of overcast days so you get the kind of <laughs> we the, do yeah, we do the, we get we get used to that so it, it's a great way of just like giving yourself an option because yeah. we do we every now and again we get good we get nice weather it's not all the time that we can never rely on it so yeah. it we need to have these tricks up our sleeve just in case we we get weather with like that and if those if that as you saw, it's just a, a bare bush with just twigs and everything. If they had leaves on, it'd be even more impactful. And I also love doing stuff like this. If it's raining, we have little bits of rain there. But if it's actually raining heavier, that can look really cool again. But but I use this setup a, a number of times, and it's always quite effective. And you, the good thing is you just know what you're going to get as well, like because I'm not relying on anything exterior. This All I need is something to shoot through. I love that. So cool, man. And I love the behind the scenes so that we can really grasp exactly what it is that you're doing there. Amazing, amazing stuff. Let's oh, jump over you. to this next one. Um, it looks like this is, uh, you got these incredible rolling hills here. I'm going to go ahead and play the video first so we can kind of see it and then yeah. you know, to explain um, what it is we're looking at here. So this was actually this was on an engagement shoot, which we which I sometimes do a few weeks before a wedding. Uh, now I did get not lots of lovely natural light shots here because it was a stunning area, but this is just to 
to show what you can do with just one light? Because uh-huh. I know that sometimes using like the three light setup can seem a bit intimidating if if you're newer to to uh, to off camera flash. So this is just show if you just have one light. So what I've done here is just killed all the ambient by using a very fast shutter speed that was on i've just got my notes here 1600 on my shutter speed and yeah. that one light behind which just has again a full cto gel so it's basically the same setup as the one that we've just looked at except uh-huh. this time there's no light on the front uh, but there was in there was quite a bit of ambient as you can see there so that means that i don't yeah. need a front light and i can just bring up a little bit in post if need be but yeah it can be a really effective just using that one light so you know it's funny because i i didn't want to show the image quite yet because I mm-hmm. want people to try to imagine what it would look like. So one light, you have the gel on it. And now basically, I, I again, I want people to kind of think like if I were setting this up with one light, what would I do? And now I want to show them what you did here, Neil, because I think it's, it's amazing. Um, again, when I saw this, I was like, man, that's such an incredible image. So here we go. Here's the, here's the shot. Ah, I love this, Neil. I mean, literally just yeah, one light you. behind him and you put the flash just high enough out of the frame. Is that right? Exactly. So that's what I'm when I'm trying to do shots like this, I always want to exclude the flash, but just have it outside because that's when I feel like you get the flare coming through. Um, but yeah, this is again, it's, it's just a really good go to setup when you've not got very much, you know, like I, I actually did this for the first time on this shoot but then a few days later i did the same shot at a wedding so i'll sometimes practice on engagement shoots like this because they're non-pressured and things like you just feel like yeah we've got the time to play around but then i'll take what i learn into my wedding photography and then i did the same shot and and i did that when i did it for the wedding it was literally in a car park but it looked very similar so you can create really effective shots if you don't have any nice and you know if the location isn't giving you very much yeah that's an incredible shot. And I it, it just, it, what do you normally use to get rid of the light stand from the, the frame? Are you using Photoshop, Lightroom? What do you do? Yeah, good question. I, I find that Lightroom isn't the best for, for cloning things out. It, it, it has its time, but it's, it, yeah. yeah, basically Photoshop. So yeah. I, I used to use the patch tool and then content aware fill, but now with the new Photoshop beta, then our generative fill is amazing. So yeah, that. <laughs> it is pretty cool, isn't it? It just kind of oh, it's scary good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it's such, a, it's such a good image. I absolutely love it, man. Let's see, let's jump over to this next one here. We have we have another shot. Uh, it looks like this might be a bride getting ready, possibly. Yeah, I wanted to include this one because I think sometimes people just associate off-camera flash with portraits or just dancing. And, and I like to use it throughout a wedding day. So with mm-hmm. this one, I, I love also to use very wide angle lenses to try and set the scene and, and tell the story better. So with this, this is the bride having her makeup done in the morning and I've just underexposed the whole scene. So my settings for this one uh, was one four thousandths of a second, F2.8 ISO 200 on my 16 to 35 mil 2.8 lens. And I've just lit the bride and the makeup artist with a sphere and a grid just to really stop the spill and just really drag your eye to them and what that's what i love about the grid especially how you can really shape the light and stop the spill so we're not light up the whole room which should just be distracting we're just really focusing the light just where we want the eye to go and then by underexposing everything else you know she just pops out it's just a different way way of telling the story but say i think it's always important to show people you don't have to just think of this in terms of portraits you can use it for any time during the day yeah so Neil, now somebody who who's maybe a beginner and they're trying to understand flash, did you have to turn off all the lights in the room or did you just do that in camera where you made it dark? No, just in camera. So this mm-hmm. was obviously in the morning while the bride's getting ready. And and again, you can see <laughs> by the sky, this yeah. was one of our UK overcast days. So yeah. it, the ambient light wasn't very strong. I don't think the makeup party had any light at all. She would have been positioned there because we, we, she would have got a little bit light coming through the doors uh-huh. and obviously by using such a quick shutter speed that is killing the ambient light and i always advise people when they're first starting out with off-camera flash to to take a shot first before you've even turned on the speed light just get your ambient set so it's all really underexposed yeah and then you just need to just like light the area that you want to light and then use the magma modifiers just to shape the light so it's not bouncing around everywhere but yeah the the trick is a very quick shutter speed yeah, I love that. It's also a good tip so you can really understand what your flashes are doing. You know, I think one of the yes. biggest biggest mistakes that, that people getting started with flash do is they'll typically 
they'll kind of take all of their flashes, they'll set them all up, and then they'll fire them all at the same time. And they haven't yeah. even shot like a base shot. They haven't added one flash at a time. They just, And then they're trying to figure out, they're like, wait, why is, I'm not seeing my gels. Well, it's because your light's spilling into your gel or whatever, right? And so it's yeah. like, like, just take your time, take one shot, you know, add your flashes in as you do, but... Um, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and I used to be like that. And then you get flustered. Then it's like, oh, it's not working. What do I do? And you just tend yeah. to just change all the dials and hope for the best. But by, like you say, by doing it in an order, then you mentally it becomes a lot easier and you understand what's happening as well. Then you can tweak things much easier. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to bring up um, this next one. I'm actually going to uh, show the image first. Because I yeah. want I want people to see the image. I want you to kind of explain it, and then we'll show. It looks like you we have like a time lapse video of sorts. That yes. Kind of, so so here's the shot. So tell everyone about this incredible shot. So I what I love to do, and the reason I put this one is because I always encourage people to to shoot outside. If you're a wedding photographer, shoot outside of weddings to play around and experiment. And as I showed you before with that engagement photograph, I do a lot of my my learning, if you like, my practicing outside of a wedding day, then take that, what I learned into a wedding day. Haven't mm -hmm. tried this an actual wedding day yet, but I would love to. So this was basically a day that I organized where I'm just shooting for fun and just trying things for the first time. And with this one, I just had this vision of creating an image where there was a veil coming out from all these different directions. And it's like, how do you do that? Because there's no veil that looks like that. So I thought, I wonder what would happen if I made a composite photograph, maybe of 10, 12 images with the veil in different areas, and then using Photoshop and layers, composited them so that they're all together and see what uh -huh. that would look like and and this was the result so it was born out of playing around so again there's no pressure when you do this it's just <laughs> experimenting but what you do learn so much and then you can take that into a wedding day yeah i love that neil i'm going to pull up the uh here's the video so uh, it's kind of like i said it's kind of like a time lapse but maybe as it's going you can kind of explain um yeah. actually can is there is there it looks like we have we have one flash behind. Is that with a, a grid back here, back there behind her? So, so yeah, we had two speed lights behind Demi. This is the, the the same model as in the first photograph. Two speed lights behind her. I think both would have had just grids on pointing huh. towards Demi. That's just to make sure that the light is hitting the veil. And then I had a third speed light facing Demi with a sphere on. You can't see, but the end photograph. Um, the light that's on Demi comes from a Magbox, which you'll see coming in at the end, because I wanted the Magbox gives the best light, so I wanted to bring uh, that in at the end. So, so a lot of the thanks for this, as you can see in the timelapse, goes to my friend Tony Darcy, um, who did a lot of the hard work. I basically got my camera on a tripod, just taking lots of shots, and, and Tony was doing the hard work by throwing the veil in the air, and then each time uh, it's in the air, I just take a shot. And uh, Demi, the, the trick to this is to use a tripod so your the camera position is not moving at all. And yeah. Demi is staying as static as possible. So in the end, I then have Demi in that pose, not moving, and the veil coming out all different ways. Now, Demi did move slightly. So I then lit Demi with the end shot, decide which one of those I want to keep, and then just using layers just to basically go through and just highlight the various different veils. It sounds complicated. I, on my YouTube channel, I do do a, a full walkthrough of this shot uh, and hopefully break it all down. So it, although it looks complicated, it's actually very simple once uh -huh. you once you practice it. Um, and it's just really effective. I just like creating things that people go like, how do you do that? And, and the reality is it's simple, <laughs> but it's just going through the process. But yeah, so each of those shots with the veil are three speed lights and then the end one of, of Demi, which is what you, the final version of Demi that you see in that shot, she's lit with the Magbox. The Magbox. The 24. That's, I love yeah. that, man. What a what a really cool, cool, cool image. And I love that Tony oh, helped you out with it. Tony is also one of our Magmod ambassadors. Yeah, uh, she's brilliant. She also has a YouTube channel where she's creating videos. She, she does, yeah. yeah. Tony and I work together lots. So we have that was like what on one of what we call like a YouTube day where we get together, we'll try and come up with a few ideas of each for each other and then help each other out creating the videos. But what's great about those is like although we're helping each other like to sh to sh film it we're also helping each other like think if it doesn't work like what do we do to fix it and i say that the great thing is by doing that you do learn a lot and then you just take that into your wedding work that's so cool neil i love the fact that you guys get together and you're you're helping each other but you're also creating videos to help the photo industry in general i mean it's like it's like yeah we both really like it yeah that's really neat i love that
Yeah. All right. So I'm going to bring up this next one here. We have this uh, video. Tell us about this one here. So I'll, I'll go ahead and play again. I've, I, yeah, I included this one because again, it's from a real wedding to show that like this again is what I will learn when I'm making my videos. Oh, you know, you sort of learn to look out for things. So I yeah. love like little bright things to shoot through a bit like I created in the foreground in the first shot with this one. I love the led lights on the wall here. So I basically just use the Magbox pro 42. I love that softbox. The light is just so nice. And I love to have it really close to my couple. So I thought, if, yeah, if you can just keep that there, if I can just hide the mag box behind the corner, you're not going to see it in the photograph, obviously. And mm -hmm. if I place my couple just on the edge beyond the wall, I can shoot down that row of LED lights using an 85 mil lens wide open to really make that foreground go into really cool bokeh. And then all I need to do is just position my couple at the end of the wall and it's easy. So just one light and I've exposed in four the lights on the wall. My, my settings here were, oh, where here they are. Uh, yeah, so on my 85 mil lens at, at 1.8, at a hundredth of a second, ISO 100. Now, the reason I use a hundredth of a second is because those LED lights are flickering. Uh, mm. So if I went fast with my shutter speed, they wouldn't all be on when you look at the final image. So I went very slow with my shutter speed. And then sometimes people think, oh, isn't that, isn't the couple going to be all blurred and everything, but the flash will freeze them. So yeah. by you can get, you can get away with using a slow shutter speed, but also in doing so the flickering LED lights were just looked like they were on constantly. So it's really very, very simple again. That's awesome. Um, Should we show them the image? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go for it. So here's the shot. Incredible. Yeah. Dude. That's so amazing. Oh, thank you. So, so the, the, the images, the, the bokeh image in the, in the front, all the way down, it's just because you're right up against the LEDs there. And yeah. That's... And again, those LEDs are really close to the camera, virtually touching the camera lens. Yeah. And then basically the light or the mag box. So really you didn't, you didn't even have to edit any light stands or mag boxes or anything out of this one. No, like, behind the wall. yeah, the wall did it all. Exactly. Yeah. And then because again, I do a lot of these images in the evening times at weddings. So although when you see the, the video from, which is just taken on my, my iPhone, it uh -huh. looks quite bright. That's just because the iPhone's exposing more, but it's actually very, you know, it's really low ambient light. So by using like such a low ISO, what was like, yeah, ISO a hundred, like it really just kills the ambient. So you don't see the wall at all. So it was more or less out of camera, that one. The difficult I, I, thing I actually found is it was actually triggering the the, the mag box. Well, not the mag, the, the AD200 that I had in there uh, through the wall. So it, not uh, everyone triggered, I, but yeah, it worked eventually. But that I guess it just, the, the radio, the signal, I don't know, couldn't get through the huh. brick. But thankfully it did work eventually. That's interesting, yeah. I one yeah. time I had a situation like that where I could not get my flashes to fire and I was like why is this happening like it was driving me nuts it would fire like every so often it would fire and oh, it was it's frustrating I, yeah well it's because I accidentally changed it off a radio and I had it set to optical <laughs> so it wasn't oh it, wasn't so it needed line of sight trigger. yeah and I was like oh my goodness I didn't realize until afterwards but it was so frustrating so you guys, if you have that issue, make sure your flash is not on optical that's on radio trigger. So yeah, good yeah. stuff, man. This is a really, really good image. And I love the fact that you chose the 42 here because you can just see kind of the softness on them, even though they're in this, 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 uh, environment, kind of this cattle scooter, this light to dark kind of environment, you can actually see that softness, especially like on the shoulders and stuff that I think really help. So. Oh, I, yeah, I love that light. If I can always, if I can, I'll use that all the time. You know, oftentimes I'm taking images and compositing it out because the light you get from the 42 is just, is beautiful. So yeah. if I can, I'll try and make sure I can use that if I've got the space. I agree. Love it, man. Love it. Good stuff. Tell us about this one here. Yeah, again, I've included this because, again, I want to show a, like a real moment from a wedding. Um, yeah. And I use off-camera flash virtually for all the speeches that I cover. Uh, now, this one I've included because it was a really tricky one because, one, the top table is actually in the middle uh, of the room here. And at first, I was worried that they were going to be speaking like across that top table and as you can see this huge balloon centerpiece which looks amazing to the eye but i was thinking i i'm gonna really struggle here with shadows but thankfully the speaker moved back but with this i wanted to really keep the ambient in the room so keep those chandeliers um keep the the, the lights on the wall the background but by underexposing so that i keep all that lovely ambient light i obviously i had to lit i had to light not only the speaker but also 
the the, the top table as well. So yeah. I use three speed lights for this that are out of the frame. I try if I can to to not include the lights in the frame because I personally think that can just become a bit distracting. So if you if we pretend that we're like a clock here and we're the bride is at twelve o'clock and we're at six o'clock, okay. I have two lights on the on the speaker. In this case, this is the groom. One would be at say just out of the frame. You see a lady with a pink a pink top on on the left, just to the side there. That would be one light. That will have just a grid on it facing towards the speaker, and that will be about 10 o'clock. Equally, there's one on the opposite side, so that would be about 2 o'clock, again, with the grid facing inwards to, towards the speaker. So you can see that he's lit both sides. And then I have a light with which was quite high, pointing slightly down with just the mag sphere on that was lighting the top table. And what I was very conscious of with and where – you know, this is where modifiers are so good is that I had to control the light. So that, that light wasn't hitting the ceiling or hitting those chandeliers. Otherwise we would have lost the ambient light uh, and all that, you know, really nice warmth. So by using the speed lights, I could really sort of direct where I wanted the light to go and, and position it well so that I was only lighting up the areas that I wanted to. So yeah, three speed lights set up and the light that is facing the, the, the where it's access to the bride and her dad would have been about seven o'clock, but high up pointing down towards them. And that way I wasn't hitting the ceiling. Um, but yeah, I, again, I was, I'd love using an off camera flash for speeches because, yeah. you know, I can just direct the light better and, and really sort of draw, draw your eye to the area of the photograph that I want you to look at in this case, the bride. I love that you use the triangle setup as well, you know, with the three lights yes, and the three I setups, love. because I feel like, I feel like it allows you to kind of move around the room a bit and still capture and make sure that people are lit. So even if you move exactly. to the right a little bit more, you still have kind of that triangle setup, no matter which area you're shooting from. Um, yeah, I think the triangle, it's re I do often for first dance as well. And I'm, I, I'd be the same, I'm sure as many people do. I'd, I love to use a triangle. I just shoot from the yeah. straight edges. So as long as the light's not behind me, I'm going to get directional light and it and it will always look like look nice. And that's something that sometimes people forget that even if you're using off camera flash, if you're shooting the same direction as it, it looks a bit on camera flash, a bit flat. So as long as you're shooting from a, a, an angle that the flash is not coming from, then you'll get really nice light and shadow. That's awesome. Do you also use that same triangle set setup when you're doing just like open dance photos? Yes. Yeah, I love to use that. I've actually started an experiment recently. I, for the first dance, I use a triangle. But uh -huh. then when people come onto the dance floor and then everyone's like lifting their arms up and everything and dancing, I find that I get a lot of problems with shadows then. So what I've now mm -hmm. started to do is, is literally uh, have I have like a pole that um that i use and that has a, an off camera flash on it and just a sphere so i literally it will be but I, again it wanted to be directional i did use to hold it just in my hand but i couldn't get the the angle right so i now use a pole that um i got from b and h and um, it just extends the light out enough to mean that when i'm sort of hitting the the, the person that i'm shooting it's yeah. a contrasty angle so yeah. it looks really nice again I love that. You know what? I, I do something similar and oftentimes I'll even take the pole and just stick it in my pocket. That way ah. it kind of it gives me like a third point to kind of rest it on and I can just kind of, you know, angle it out. That's a cool. Bit. Yeah. Then, I've only just started using this, but really? I'm, I'm really enjoying it and I'm getting very consistent results. You know, sometimes what I like to do too is I'll put a, um, a mag bounce on it. I call it my lacrosse stick <laughs> because that's what yeah. it looks like is like a little lacrosse stick. But I'll put a mag bounce on it just because it's so efficient with the, you know, you can shoot it at like 1 128th or 1 64th power, cool. something very low. And I'll be able to, now it depends on what you're using, if it's 8200 or if it's a normal flash, but yeah, um, but it's, uh, but yeah, sometimes I'll use that and it, it's, it's, I love that look. I love that look. When I can, I love having an assistant hold like a Magbox 24 and follow me at that angle because it looks even better. But yeah, when I'm that's doing it amazing. by myself, I'll do it with that, that lacrosse stick. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I love that. I need to try the bounce more. I, I'm just addicted to the grid and the sphere, and I'm always using that. But these people I see using the bounce, I'm like, why am I not using it? <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely need to give that a go. Well, like I said, I'll use it, especially on uh, dance floor, people having fun, things are happening. That's when I'll use it. And I usually like to use it off because I want to make sure my camera's a little bit lighter. 
So, you know, I'll just put a trigger on top of the camera and I don't have to carry a whole flash up there and just put that to yeah. the side. And then if I want to, I can even just, you know, if I'm taking a break or whatever, just kind of rest it against the wall or whatever. So, yeah, um, no, that's cool. That's really good. Yeah. Neil, this has been enlightening, man. There's been some incredible videos Some I love the behind the scenes. I love being able to see you in action and kind of how you work. Um, I, man, I just... It, this is one of those episodes that I hope people watch and then rewatch because they're going to be like, man, there's Aww. so many good things that I picked up from that. So thank you so much for taking this time to, to talk with no, me. No, at any time. I'm, it's, it's, um, it's always an honor to be asked. I, I, I love talking about MagMod and sharing my work. So thank you so much for asking me. Yeah, you're awesome, man. I need to go back and count all the episodes, but I think this might be close to our 100th episode. I, I don't... Oh, wow. uh, I don't know exactly. Oh, I hope how it many... is. I'd love that honor. <laughs> yeah. So, so maybe that's it. I need to start putting numbers like episode number, but uh, thank you again. I appreciate it for those uh, who are watching or, or, you know, catching this for the first time. We actually have, I think it's 11 uh, currently scheduled for how I shot it over the next two months. And there are some really incredible photographers, just like Neil, they're going to be joining me. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and check us out as we, as we uh, launch these new, how I shot it videos. So, Thank you again, Neil. Appreciate your time, man. You have a great day, okay? Pleasure. Thanks, right, Trevor. Take... Speak to you soon. Yes. Likewise. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers.